Hey, it's Jonathan from Little Red Tug. And certainly here we're in the Northeast, it's winter time and it's not boating weather. You can see that the tug's behind me, it's put away and all wrapped up for the winter time. And this is going to be a special video. We're not going to see any sort of cinematic videos like this. Or even ones like this, because this reminds me of summertime. But what we're here to do is a special episode where I'm going to do a TV style video. I've got some videos lined up and stuff that I shot from the summer and I'm excited to share with you. So follow along today on an episode of Little Red Tug TV. Let's go. Alright, so um, for this part of the show I want to talk about a couple things. I just want to say like I get a lot of emails and stuff through the Little Red Tug website and I get contacts from people who have a bunch of questions. Um, sometimes on the YouTube channel there's a bunch of people who ask uh, specific questions. And so in here I thought this today would be a great uh, chime to just chat about a couple things. I wrote some issues down. Uh, I'm actually on the Connecticut River in uh, Gill or Barton's Cove which is behind me here. So took a trip up the river. It's uh, yeah, end of September, early October and uh, just pulled over and started a fire and having a beer um, with the boat behind me. So um, I wrote down a couple things that people had questions about um, and in terms of what I've done this summer, uh, so a couple other things. One thing is uh, I had a great trip is we did this thing called Swim the Sound, which is across Long Island Sound. Uh, there's a fundraising swim where people swim either individually or in teams. They leave from Port Jefferson on Long Island and they go over to the Connecticut shore. It's about a 16 or 18 mile swim. And what they do is they ask for people to be escort boats for the swimmers or perimeter boats. So I was a perimeter boat for it. Uh, the night before we went over to Port Jefferson, we had a great meal over there. They put you up at a marina and then you leave the next morning and then you escort the swimmers who are swimming at just uh, two miles an hour and they go across from the sound. Uh, I got a couple of videos of that and some pictures and stuff. Unfortunately, the GoPro uh, video didn't come out quite as well as we expected, so um, that was a kind of disappointing thing because that was going to be a nice episode for Swim the Sound, but it was really good. So that was one of the things uh, we did. Um, I know people were looking, they asked about the cabin and they wanted to see a cabin tour, so I'm going to do a cabin tour later in this episode when it's clean. Uh, and then also I did a cabin tour you're going to see later on when uh, we were on the Trent, what it looks like actually in real life, what a cabin looks like on the Ranger 21. So I get a lot of questions about how many people can sleep on the boat and how you sleep on the boat. So the cabin is tight, like it's a tiny house on the water. And one of the issues is, is that there's a V berth up front. So if I'm out with my buddy um, JP and we're out for the day um, or the overnight, what we do is one of us will sleep in a tent on land or um, sleep in the back across the boat and sleep up front. If you were like a husband and wife or a really close couple, for sure you could sleep up in the cabin, but it's just as really tight uh, in terms of how much space there is up there. Um, a couple people asked about um, what other events we'd done this summer. So we did the Trent Severn Canal. So I have a video coming up with that. And then also I have a uh, video coming up with us being on the Connecticut River, which is a lot of fun too. In terms of maintenance for the boat, uh, I did a couple things this year. One of the issues is we had our inverter on the boat was, uh, it failed just out of uh, just randomness. And so though we had troubleshot the issue to see if there was batteries um, in the back that were an issue or plugs or connections or something, but the inverter failed. And so as you can see in the videos here, um, me fixing the inverter here. So we had to put a new inverter in. That was a couple hundred dollars. What does the inverter get us? Well, it gets us uh, power to the cabin uh, when we can plug in things. So we added a fan this year because it was pretty hot. So we can run a fan in the cabin. We can recharge all our iPads and those kind of events. And um, it was pretty good. So we just replaced that. That was a couple hundred dollars, but an easy fix. We used exactly the same inverters you can see here. So we just literally like plug and play. And it was just a uh, afternoon of just switching that over too. Um, we've been having some issues with the boat. Uh, I don't know if other Ranger 21 tug owners out there have the Volvo Penta engine like we do. It's been a really um, crack-proof engine in terms of the quality and just 
how much maintenance it hasn't taken up. So it's an incredible engine. Uh, one of the issues we noticed before we left for the Trent or left for the Trent is that the uh, throttle was running high. There's a return spring. So I'll put a picture here. You can see of what I'm talking about. And the return spring um, is either missing or is um, just not effective. So we couldn't find one. So what happened is the engine wasn't returning to the neutral position. So uh, JP actually and I took a trip while we were at, uh, before we went to the Trent 7 while we were at the Tugboat Roundup and um, found a couple springs at a True Value hardware store. We eventually found one that fits. And now that's our temporary workaround. Um, so that throttle returns to idle. Uh, I think we'll just take a look at that and get it done um, professionally like over the winter time when we can get it to a marina. Um, and speaking of which, we also went to the Tugboat Roundup, so I have a video coming up of that too. Uh, we had an awesome time. This was our fourth time at the Tugboat Roundup. Um, really great fireworks, great people, great boat parade. Spent a Friday night and a Saturday night up there and then left early and headed out to our Trent Severn adventure on a Sunday and spent a week on the Trent Severn. Um, I want to go a little bit into later on into route planning and locking through things for the specific because a couple people emailed me about how it was getting the boat through on the Trent Severn so I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but other than that I just want to catch people up. Um, in the next part of the episode I'm going to show you the cabin tours and uh, we're going to do a little maintenance on the boat too. Hey, so we're at a stop at Bob Cajun here on the Trent Severn and as part of this episode uh, I wanted to show the boat inside so like you saw in the previous portion of the episode here I showed you the inside of the boat when it's clean and nice and everything because people want to see the inside I wanted to show you about what it looks like when we're actually underway because it's a little bit different so the setups different so you got lots of nice Instagram shots of the boat when it's all clean and nice and everything but the reality is is that it's a tiny boat with a tiny house kind of on waters is how we describe it so we've been on the Trent Severn for this trip for I think seven or eight days here at this point um, so we're pretty much sleeping on the boat and living on the boat all the time except when we get to ports so as you can see behind me here uh, and I'll show you some video what happens is uh, when there's two of us here the boat sleeps too technically up front but I'll show you inside the cabin is really small um, inside is gonna be a little bit cramped and dirty we just have a lot of stuff um, but outside is where one of us sleeps so in this case JP has been sleeping on the outside here so we have our engine cover here set up and we've moved the mattresses back from the back of the boat and then there's enough room for one person to sleep here relatively comfortably um, on the boat here and then we also have some curtains that we put down on the side if it's raining and then the top bimini cut top comes sort of down and uh, allows us two people to sleep one person outside if it's raining heavily like we have some tarps on the side and, and the top bimini cover covers it pretty well um, so that covers pretty much the outside and then we have on uh, this side over here we keep um, some bags some waterproof bags and what we call the kitchen so we keep our food that's not refrigerated just general foods and supplies over here um, if we look inside the cabin here it's a little bit of a mess um, but you can see there's certainly not tons of room here in this uh, boat so we don't use the head here while we're underway there is a head that's located right underneath here so there's a small head here if it was an emergency situation we've been able to find bathrooms where we are and then up in here is where two people would sleep now I'm six foot something three and it's pretty tight uh, so for one person I can sleep up there my head goes here and my feet goes here we put this uh, box down here it gives you a little bit of extra leg room here um, some people sleep the other way and and obviously a couple could sleep the only problem with being in here is that there's not lots of um, room in here in terms of um, standing and, and pivoting around so it is really tight boat it's really well thought out like I'm I'm super happy with the boat there's nothing I would change I would just realize that this boat is a small boat it's a when you move to the next up the 23 foot or the 25 foot you have considerably more beam 
and width with the boat and then you have more amenities such as a table to sit down at which would make a big difference um, especially on like rainy nights but in terms of like just being a trailerable boat for this price for this price range and for what it is it's an exceptional boat um, a couple other things down over here we have our fridge and this has been running on the 12 volt power here pretty well uh, underneath here is our stove and our sink and then along the back you're gonna see is where we keep our coolers on the back of the boat so for storage on the boat it's pretty tight um, there is like on the back here we'll keep two coolers here so we can keep cold items and those items there and both of those and then on the front we have uh, a rainproof bag here and we can keep some firewood too so um, again like perfect boat perfect size boat for for what we're doing for cruising a little tight but you just make it work uh, it's sort of like the same as the tiny house on water is what we kind of tell people so you saw the boat earlier in the episode when it was clean and neat and now this is actually how the boat functions while we're underway so great boat great time just uh, neat to see People often ask why my boat is called Toto, and it's because of this one event and this one special cat. In 2011, there was a devastating tornado that came across the town of Brimfield where I live. I was working that day as a firefighter and a paramedic, and the day after the tornado, a tree worker found a little tiny kitten that was only three weeks old and brought him to the fire station. We couldn't take care of him, but we gave him to the animal shelter, and I got to adopt him back, and I wrote a book about him called Toto the Tornado Kitten. In the ensuing years, Toto and I traveled to over 500 different schools, libraries, and nursing homes. We visited with children, we visited hospitals, and we went to the bank and the fire station we hung out together. He was an amazing cat that took me on an incredible journey that I would have never expected. Together, we raised over 500 pounds of cat food, along with $73,000 for local animal shelters. In turn, I found a best friend, and I thought it was only fitting that I would name my boat after my best friend. Toto was an amazing cat, and his journey started with a tornado and ended up just recently. Unfortunately, Toto passed away several weeks ago, but I'm not sad. I'm happy about the journey that Toto took me on, the amazing venture he took me on, and the places that he went. We all have opportunities in our lives. Some of us pass them up and some take them. And in this case, Toto took me on a journey that I never would have expected to have. I'm amazed how one cat can heal a community together and also make people smile, and in doing so, make a difference in so many lives. I'll miss him so much. I still have a boat named after him, and he together will travel on for a long time going forward. I'll miss you, buddy. Hey, it's uh, October 22nd here, 2023. And it's sort of the end of the boating season up here in New England. Um, we had a really great summer on the boat. I spent over 100 hours put on the boat and um, trips. Did uh, Swim the Sound, we did the Trent Severn, uh, Connecticut River a bunch of times and some other places. So I had a really good summer this summer. The boat ran great. I'm so excited that you could follow along on uh, Little Red Tug. Um, this is the end of the boating season, so I'm going to put the boat away do some winterizing and then uh, start planning for next season. So I think next season is going to be either Georgian Bay or um, the Rideau Canal, um, but otherwise we'll get out there. I appreciate you following along and I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Little Red Tug. And that's it for the boating season. I might do something in the winter, but otherwise I'll see you all in the spring. Thanks a lot.